Well, 680's Chris McCusker joins us now. And uh, Chris, a uh, record-breaking week for the markets as Trump gets down to work. Seems like they loved his executive orders. Uh, yes, it's very true, Francis. Now, today a bit of a pause, and, and not to say that he wasn't busy doing other things as well today, but likely uh, people's heads spinning from all the activity this week, all his announcement, a flurry of announcements, most notably for Canada, of course, the fact that that uh, Keystone XL pipeline is back on the table by way of executive order. So the Dow did hit 20,000 for the first time ever this week. It stayed there for three days, including today. So it closed above that mark, even with a very modest pullback. The S&P and the NASDAQ also hit all-time highs this week. And the TSX, it moved above its all-time closing high couldn't quite hang on so we don't have a new all-time closing high just yet it finished the week about 80 points from that mark today yeah and we'll have to see if it can uh, sustain itself at that level yeah well yeah i mean you know what's going to happen it's just a matter of when we'll see uh let's talk <laughs> about uh, general motors now because the union there is saying that uh 600 uh, 600 to 625 jobs being lost at the assembly plant in london ontario Yes, and there are a couple really interesting facts in here, Francis. Uh, this is the assembly plant, as you mentioned. It employs 2,800 uniform workers as of today. Now, here's the thing. Union officials have been told that those 600 or so jobs will be moved to Mexico because they say, the labor officials, the union officials, that labor is cheaper there. So this really is so interesting, given what U.S. President Trump has been saying is back and forth with Mexico, his America First talk. Uh, Unifor National President Jerry Diaz actually calls this decision a very clear sign that NAFTA must be renegotiated. That's something else that we've heard from Trump. Uh, these job cuts are slated to happen in July. Yeah, and yet you have others saying that uh, we just need to be more competitive here. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it opens a, a whole new discussion. Let's talk about Tim Hortons because, uh, you know, they've expanded across the world into the U.S. and now into Mexico. Yeah, a lot of news around Mexico today. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Hortons is planning, indeed, to expand into Mexico. It would be its first Latin American endeavor. It's not clear how many restaurants. We don't have details. We don't know when these shops might open. But this comes on the heels of an announcement that we had back in August, where Tim Hortons said it would add stores in the UK and in the Philippines. Now, Tim Hortons has more than 4,400 restaurants in Canada, the US, and the Middle East. I am told as well that 75% of all coffee sold at fast food restaurants in Canada comes from Tim Hortons, so no doubt that it's popular here. Uh, stock in the parent company, Restaurant Brands International, moved higher on Bay Street today. Now the question is, will they import the churro into Canadian <laughs> Tim Hortons stores? That would well, be money be a seller, deal. I think. Yeah, there that could would be, be a deal. Um, anticipation is building for the release of Nintendo's new game console. Have you seen it? Uh, I have, and it's actually really cool the way it's set up with sort of a tablet and things you can attach and move around. Um, it is sit, uh, set to hit stores on March the 3rd, uh, and one analyst is actually expecting that it will be more popular than the Wii U. This is Michael Pachter. He's with Wedbush Securities. He says it's priced at $300, which is reasonable. He also likes the whole control scheme, suggesting that it's more intuitive. Now, he says that the Wii U sold 3.9 million units in its first year, and he is suggesting that the Switch could do double that, hmm. possibly seven to eight million units. I know it's wow. really highly anticipated. Well, it's nostalgic, right? For mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. our age, and then our kids can enjoy it too, so. Absolutely. We'll see. A Toronto company wants to make records using new technology. Are we talking about vinyl? Yes, and really? talk about nostalgia. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is right up that alley. The company is called Microforum. It is a manufacturer of CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, and now vinyl. Um, I am told by the uh, company that this technology is brand new, it's fully automated, and it was developed right here in Toronto. Uh, and because it's fully automated, it's much easier for operators. There are touch screens and temperature controls. Uh, there is a really big market out there still for vinyl. It's coming back, uh, and this technology is making it all more feasible, even than it was 
five or six years ago. Now, I'm also told, and this is important, Francis, mm -hmm. it maintains that true analog sound mm -hmm. of vinyl, which really is, you know, part of its, it's charm. Um, and it, a, a regular old turntable will work if you have one laying around. <laughs> <laughs> if it's in your uh, parents' uh, garage, maybe dust it off and bring yeah. it back out. Yeah, very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you, Chris. Have a great thank weekend. Thank you. You too.